What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for the first episode of Persona 5 The Animation. Now, guys, this is going to be a very different um, review series for an anime series I've done. Pro uh, and I say that because Persona 5 is actually, or the Persona 5 The Animation, I should say, is actually the one series uh, anime series I've watched or I've actually already watched, or, or read, or read, or I guess I should say, or played, or I guess I should say watched, the source material that this is based off of. Because as you guys know, I've actually played um, a bit of Persona 5, I haven't been Gamefly. Haven't really, really had time to really sat down just to play the game. I've, like a few weeks, like, like a few days ago during Spring Break, I played a little bit of it just because, you know, yeah, the anime was coming up, I felt like playing Persona 5, just get a little farther in there. Because, eh, be, uh, just because, you know, because this is an RPG. So when you play RPGs, guys, I'm sure you guys all know that when you play an RPG, you got to set time. You got to, like, you know, clear your schedule to play RPG. Especially, like, with Persona 5, where you're constantly, you know, micromanaging your time to make sure you, you're not wasting days and wasting precious minutes and shit, you know, if you play Persona 5. Which, let me see this, which, by the way, I'm saying this right now. You're not going to be seeing Persona 5 gameplay for this re review, so I know I played the intro right now, but that's only because this is the only footage I could get off of that, so it was to run off my PS4 via the share button. All the rest of the shit has been blocked off, which, because you guys know Atlas doesn't want story spoilers leaking out, so that's what I did, which makes sense, because, you know, it's story-based, don't want spoilers leaking out, even though there's alternate ways to record the game, so it's kind of pointless in that sense, but, eh, yeah, whatever, Atlas. Anyway, so like I said, Persona 5, the animation, is going to be like the only series I've been, I'm probably going to review until maybe, until like, Black Torch gets an anime series, or I guess Teach Tokyo Gori when we get to like, I don't know, season 6 or whatever, when Token actually becomes canon, because that'll be like the only time where I'll be like, yeah, I kind of know what's going to happen, even though I was really just reading those chapters, mostly just for the Token shit, I wasn't really paying because I have them, because I didn't even know what the hell I was looking at half the time with those chapters, because I was like, because like I said, I didn't read read before it, so I didn't know who, who this character, who was that character, I was just like, Token, 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 give me that Token goodness, anyway, so like I said, I've actually, so, but I've actually played, like I said, I've played the game, but I did watch a Let's Play of the game. Now, Persona 5 was actually very, because this is, I like, I'm, I'm going, uh, 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 look, okay, let me start over again. Okay, I, you guys saw my previous uh, reviews to the first episode I did for Tokyo Gori and SEO. I, I, I do, like, before I review the episode, I do a little context. They were talking, giving a little context about, you know, my history with the series, and kind of just like, hey, this is what you guys should expect from this review show, because Tokyo Go and SA are pretty controversial series. Persona 5 is not really controversial, I just kind of want to give you my history with the series, or with Persona 5, I should say, because I haven't played any of the games. Excuse me. <coughs> so, uh, so Persona, Persona 5 actually came out here in the States. I was very iffy about playing it, because I was already a fan of JRPG. I mean, I love Final Fantasy X, I love the Final Fantasy games. But I was like, eh, hey, is this really kind of my game? This is definitely something that's really, that is definitely made in Japan. I mean, what I heard about, you know, would be turn maids. I mean, I got nothing to deal with, deal with like, I got no beef with turn maids. Like I said, I love Final Fantasy X. But I was like, ah, I don't know. The stuff about, like, you'll be caught in time. You'll be pressured, you know, having to micromanage your time. But I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. I saw reviews. People were appraised this game. I was like, eh, I don't know. This is really my style. This is kind of my kind of game where I'm constantly being rushed or, like, you know, pressured, I should say, with this constant looming time loop. Make sure I don't loop ruin, I don't lose uh, precious days. So then I did what a lot of people do when they're kind of iffy about a game. And I watched the Let's Play series. And the Let's Play series was by Nico B. I watched the series first by the first, like, probably by, like, the end of the Kamoshita, with Silver Kamoshita, I was well already hooked into the game. I was like, okay, I'm going to play this game. This looks fucking awesome. But then, but I never stopped watching this list because the story was really engrossing. I was like, I want to know more. So I kept watching, I kept watching, I kept watching till the very end. So yeah, I have not played the game myself. I haven't finished the game myself. I played a little bit of it. But yeah, so I guess you say I spoiled myself from the game. But hey, that the story, I was uh, the story for Persona 5 was awesome. And I just, uh, I definitely wish I could just, you know, set some time away just to play the Persona 5 because I love the game. It's odd, uh, like, I love the game. For what I play of it, I love it. So, and so, since I know, since I've, I've watched the last place, so I actually know how the story's going to play out. 
And that also means I now have I now know the feeling that manga readers get when they watch an anime series that's based off of their manga's the current would be Attack on Titan, you know, My Hero Academia, Dragon Ball, um, Naruto, you know that shit. So now I know I get that feeling. Like when I saw, I'll notice things that anime that like little foreshadowing to future events of the series. You know, uh, I can say it's a damn good feeling watching that episode, and knowing and knowing what's gonna happen later on. Ooh yeah, I like this high. I'm getting yeah yeah. Anyway, so let's start with the episode. Let's begin. So let's talk about the episode itself. So. so we start off with our bit with our MC. Okay, yeah. Now, uh, now, if you guys don't already know, the canon name, at least for the anime series for our MC episode five, his name is Ren. But I'm also gonna call him Akira, which is the name he has in the manga because honestly, one Akira sounds very looks more like an Akira, or I might call him by the name I gave him when I played the game, which is Sasuke Kurosaki. I'll let you guys guess which anime characters I am referencing with that name. So you basically refer to I'm mostly been referring to his character, but if I say but if Sasuke ends up slipping up, you know, that's why, because that's why I named him. Anyway, and then you like say those one of the other members of the Fantasy, I'm not gonna say who it is. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, anime only. Ooh, that just sounds good to say. I'm sorry guys, it's just I've never felt this high before. I mean oh man, it feels good. Man, it feels good. Yeah. Anyway, I, I'm sorry. I'm just, it's kind of weird feeling this. <laughs> I've never felt this before. Knowing what's going to happen. And to see the reaction anime only get. Oh, it feels good. Anyway. I'm not going to spoil anime only who he is. So, and we also. He makes his escape out with the briefcase. I'm not going to say what's in the briefcase. For two reasons. One, I don't want to spell it. And two, I forget what's actually in that briefcase. Because <laughs> like I said, it's been a while since I've watched Nico B's Let's Play. And so, so, so our, uh, Akira makes his escape, and he's like, you know, of course, doing in classic Phantom Thief fashion, doing it all flash, you know, he jumps out of a window, we actually got other members of the Phantom Thief talking in here, telling, like, you know, hey, do this, do this, do this, and do this, you know. The, so far, I'll say this right now, the Japanese are, because I actually, because like I said, I watched the Nigga Beast Life, which was dubbed. I prefer the English job, but the Japanese audio is really good, but there's one character in the first episode that we got introduced to that I do not like his Japanese voice. At all, it, it it's so unnatural for the character. It's almost like drag. It's almost like you know the woman that voices Goku in the in Dragon Ball. It's about almost as off as that. Cause like I respect, like don't get me wrong. She, I respect the I respect her. Like you know she is an OG. She voiced Goku before you know Shaw and Shibble and all those other guys. She put food on the table for fun of it. But I'm like I'm not a fan of her voice for Goku. Maybe just because I'm so used to Shaw and Shibble's voice that I can't that just I just immediately like you know get defensive, or like, you know, I just, ah, I mean, like, you know, no, dude, get that shit out of me because I'm so used to Shashil's voice, I don't know, but anyway, so, he makes his way out, and then, which he then gets caught by the police, and he gets arrested, and then he gets interrogated, brutally interrogated, because these are some grown-ass men beating the shit out of a high school kid, like it's the Dark Knight, because you guys remember the Dark Knight when, the, when Ben would just beat all the joke until like, WHERE IS HE? WHERE IS YOU KNOW HARVEY? WHERE IS YOU RACHEL? WHERE ARE THEY? He's like, that hard. He's like, you know, that's, that's probably what the kids were They were injecting him with, I don't know what, a truth serum? I don't know what the fuck they were injecting that kid. I don't know what they were injecting into my boy Akira. So, uh, uh, Nietzsche, uh, shit, I forgot her name. Anijima, the detective that was previously working on this case, comes in, you know, I forget her first name, it's, I don't want to start with an F, it'll come back to, it'll probably come back to me, and she, and she comes in, you know, she's going to take over, interrogate him, and, you know, ask him some questions about, you know, the fan of Thieves, the Metaverse, and all that shit, and so, uh, and the, the events of the anime, the first time I do play, around, the, pretty much the same as the video, there's little differences here and there that I noticed, uh, but nothing really major, it's not like, Tokyo Ghoul or somewhere like people are like oh it's this is completely different than manga different this this is really like but you guys already know what I think about Tokyo Ghoul watch my review of the first episode of Re if you're curious if you don't already know so then he kills in the flashback where we first um, see um, Akira first meet our boy oh, with Sojiro I was forgot to say for a second but so uh, to anime only spots this view y'all are going to love Sojiro Sure, he comes off as an asshole at the beginning, but trust me, when we get to the later parts of the season, especially when Best Girl Futaba shows up, oh, y'all are gonna love Sojiro, trust me, mm. I love Sojiro, I love Sojiro, 
And so he comes in, so he's going to be the one that's going to take care of us. He is our guardian for reasons. I don't actually remember. I don't actually remember that he actually gave us an exam reality. He's like, oh, yeah, someone asked me to, and they, I get paid. Like, I, I don't know. It's just there, there was some deeper reason why he picked I remember, Maybe there was. I'm just forgetting. Anyway, so he shows us to our room, and then, and then that kind of where the end, the first flashback, you know, back to Nijima, um, you know, inter interrogating, interrogating our boy Akira, and so we get back to the past, and uh, where we first, where we see him going to school, and he's trying to you know, chill it outside the rain, and just kind of you know, waiting for the, just praying for Claire so he gets away to where we get, where we then get introduced to the first female character, on. Takamaki, or yeah, on Takamaki. Yeah, I'm pretty, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's where her last name was. Um, so yeah, on overall, uh, to anime only, you're you're gonna really enjoy on. Uh, she's not really one of my favorite. She's the best girl. She, if I had to rank her, I'd probably put her below um, Kawakami. Uh, or I guess I don't know what actually. I put her again over. I put her below Makoto. Like if I had to rank her, it'd probably uh, the top like uh, four or five best girls and uh, personified would be. Futaba number one, Kawakami number two, Makoto, and then on would be last. And so, so you know, and then we and then we get met to our first uh, to the first target the fan feeder going to talk to Kamo Shithead. Why do I call him Kamo Shithead? If you played the game, you know that exact reason. I'm not going to spoil it what it is, but I'm going to tell you, anime only, watching this video, you're not ready. You're not ready for what's going to go down with Kama Shithead. I'm saying this right now, you're not ready. You will be shocked. You will be disgusted. And it's going to be fucking crazy. It's going to be fucking awesome. I'm just going to say this right now to anime only. You're not ready. You're not ready. Ah, but and he was next. But then when I heard his voice. Sweet Jesus, did I not like it in the slice? Oh my god, his voice is so off, because in the dub, it sounded a lot better in the dub. But in the but Japanese, oh god, no. Ugh, it sounds awful, in my personal opinion. Ugh, I don't like it. And then, we then meet up to our, to our, to my brother in arms. Seriously, this dude's like my favorite character in the whole game that isn't Futaba. My man, Ryuji. Now, the anime only. I'm going to say this right now. Y'all are going to love Ryuji. He is going to be your brother in arms. You will want to share a beer with this man. Seriously, he's like my favorite character that isn't Futaba. Oh my god, I love Ryuji. I'm not going to give away spoilers, but oh, I love Ryuji. That man is fucking awesome. I just love Ryuji. I love him. I can go. I'm not going to. I can't say enough times, but I just love Ryuji. Oh, he is so good. You guys are going to love him. If you're an anime only... You are going to love Ryuji. I'm just saying right now. And so, um, an app. And actually, I've forgotten to mention before, but an app appears on Akira's phone. Uh, the I'm gonna just I'm just gonna call it the NAV app, which is how they which is how they're gonna infer. I'm just gonna say it right now, just to go. I know I'm kind of spoiling little things right here, but they're not really. I'm not gonna give anything way major like you know, plot twist or anything. But so he's like, eh, whatever, and he deletes it. But it appears back on his phone, and actually, um, when. Ryuji's talking to Akira, and he's talking about, you know, Kama Shithead, how he's like, you know, he thinks he's the king of the castle at Shibuya Academy. It, um, triggers hits to get them to transform back, to transfer to the metaverse, and go into, uh, Kama Shithead's, uh, palace. So then they walk down, they go inside his palace, they, um, get, meet up with some soldiers, or uh, knights that are pretty much, uh, Kama Shithead's guards, and then they get captured, and then... Kama Shithead, you know, Brent comes into their cell, tells them, like, you know, kill him, and then, so, they actually uh, get Ryuji, put him against the wall, and then Kama Shithead, or shadow version of Kama Shithead, slaps him around a couple times, and then, our boy, and so then, while it's happening, Akira, through her rage, and then he unlocks his persona. His, per I forget the exact name of his persona with call, but he says, of course, then we get the transformation where he says, I am thou, thou art I. You guys probably already know it, where he takes off the mask. Now, I'm going to be honest, guys, this is like the one part where I was like, oh, wait, oh, oh, guys, there's actually one part I forgot to mention. A, a little after, uh, we first, when uh, Sojiro introduces, when Akira is, uh, introduces Sojiro, when he goes into school, you know, get his uniform, get accustomed to things, we meet Kawakabi. What I'm going to say right now, guys, Annie you're going to love Kawakabi. She is fucking awesome. Uh, but... When a Kawakabe, when she was talking, when a Kawakabe was talking, like, oh man, why do I gotta do it? She actually dropped a flyer. 
down to admin, down to mo now to people that play the game. You guys know this is actually subtle foreshadowing to something later on. I'm not gonna spoil what it is, but I thought that was a nice touch by anyone picture to put in that subtle foreshadowing. I'm, like I said, I'm not gonna spoil what it is, but I'm just gonna drop it right now. I like that subtle foreshadowing that anyone put in there. So back to where it was. So here it gets through, takes off his mask, transform, which I, I think the game did a little bit better just because in the game we saw, we take off the mask, we saw these blue fa flames that are pretty much like the face of his persona kind of just envelop his face. It just looked a lot better, but the anime's kind of a little different, but I mean, we still kind of get that same kind of like, you know, uh, graphic or look where we see, you know, uh, the persona's face kind of like, you know, peer over Akira's, but I don't think it was done as well. And that's pretty much where the episode ends with him transforming and to him awakening to his persona. And that's pretty much where we didn't really get an OP or really an ED. I don't really know what was playing that because that was the ED or the OP. Or either. Anyway. So over and then at the end of the episode we have to get uh, T to uh, Morgana uh, to be who's gonna be interested in next week's episode. Overall, I fucking love this episode. It was great seeing, you know, persona was nice thing I care talk. Because if you play the game, you know, Kira is, is like, you know, one of those sides that doesn't do much speaking, other than, like, you know, other than, like, Persona, or, like, you know, or, like, the one or two lines he had, he ever talked, like, in the game itself. That wasn't, you know, just, you know, little text boxes that the player, player would pick, um, or dialogue choices, I should say. So yeah, I like the little self so foreshadowing with great art animation from A1 Pictures. I'm definitely looking forward to how A1's gonna do it. In case you're wondering about the anime because it's uh, from the game actually done by Production IG. Which, eh, I mean, I say that they're on, on par with each other. I say the art animation looks about on par. I mean, I think I probably the game looked a little bit better only because Production I probably had a little, a little bit of a bigger budget from Atlas or maybe they did. Uh, yeah, so besides that, Overall, I give this episode a 10 out of 10, so hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, subscribe if you're new, follow me on Twitter if you like this, box below, and as always, come back for more, see you guys next time.